Oh boy. I'm somebody now! Things are going to start happening to me now. Hello, people of planet Earth. Well, as you may or may not know, I've been trying to save up for a cool astronomy camera so I can be like the big guys. I've been looking for an APS-C sensor because that's what I shoot with my DSLR. Um, seems to work well. Astronomy Tools tells me that it's a good match for the telescopes I have. So all of the APS-C sensor cameras that I've been looking at, either blue or red, they're usually 1500 bucks. Been looking for a great deal. I was on Telescopius one day. I found an advertisement on a camera from a company that I hadn't really heard of. So doing some research on that company, apparently I'm the only one that hasn't heard of it. Seemed to be a great deal. It was $1,420 and it came with a lot of cool stuff, which made the deal a lot better. I finally came up with cash and let's take a look at what I got. Okay, the Ogma AP26CC color camera. AP for astrophotography, 26 for 26 megapixels. Comes in a nice padded carry case. Power cable. Power supply. I don't think you get that with those red ones. Some adapters to achieve focus, probably. Got a 21 millimeter, 16.5 millimeter. And an assortment of other adapters and fittings. There is one, I believe it's this one. That will change your back focus from 16 point or 17.5 to 12.5 if you need that to add something else. USB 3 cable. Feels like a pretty nice quality one. And the camera. So basically, the same camera that. You can get in red or blue. APS-C sensor. 26 megapixels. Very nice. Seems to have all the other specifications that the other ones have. I've heard tell this one's actually made by Toop Tech. There's just a few differences. That, I, that I'll go over in a second. We have the USB 3 port, USB 2 hub, power in, LEDs. So this has most of the same specs as the other cameras in this class. Uh, the 26 megapixels, 6224 by 4168. It's an IMX 571 sensor. So you have zero amp glow 512 megs of ram there is a anti-dew heater around the sensor built in back focus is 17.5 as i said from here in so you just add the rest for 55 the only thing I noticed that was different with this, other than the price, it's a lot cheaper, well, somewhat cheaper, 1420 shipped. That the full well capacity is 100 ke, the other ones seem to be 80, and this also cools to minus 40 C below ambient. The other ones are 35. I think the QHY camera has the same full well capacity as these. So you get all this stuff with this, plus this also came with it. 
get a two inch BVIR cut filter. Augma branded. Not exactly sure who makes the filters. Does look like it has nice coating on it. And also a filter drawer. Now the usual kit comes with just a filter holder, but I asked if I could get the filter drawer. I said I was going to review all this on my YouTube channel, so he actually gave me the filter drawer for the same price. So I guess I'm a paid shell now, so take that into consideration. This feels really nice, high quality. Fits tight. I don't think there'll be much light leak. I did ask about more drawers for it. They said they don't have any as of yet, but they do have some STL files where you can actually print filter drawers. So I'm going to try that. Comes with all the attachment screws. Um, this will screw on here on these four screws right there. So we'll get all this together, put it on the telescope, see what we can do. The whole buying experience was quite favorable. Um, the CEO, or I guess he's the founder of Ogma, name's Juan Martinez. He sent me this really nice letter, actually addressed to me. I'm sure he wrote it just for me. Says thanks, gives you the website for the support. Um, the manual for the camera is a live document it's actually online so they can change things when they need to but he seems like a really nice guy he always got back to me really quickly by email very genuine person all right we'll put all this stuff together see what we can do okay i believe this is a stable platform we got everything screwed and bolted on good. Have 55 millimeters of back focus. Let's get it out under the stars. Okay, here we are guiding away with the new camera. You can see one five minute sub here. I'm shooting with dual narrow band tonight because I have like about a 80% moon. Still have some smoke, but not near as bad as it has been. Um, so I did a total wiped out PhD2 and set up a new profile for the camera. Uh, the gain is set to zero. I took a subscriber suggestion. I uh, messed around with the gamma here. I can't really see a lot of stars, but PhD2 can. Uh, you can see this one up here in the corner. It's, you can see kind of a haze around it, so there's still some smoke going on, but I seem to be guiding staying around from 0.6 to 0.8 which is the best it's been for a while I got multiple stars so I kind of have that worked out I'll wait until we have really clear skies before I start messing around I just left everything as default I'm shooting one second exposures with the aggressiveness on 70 and 100. Seems to be working right now. So to go back to Nina here, even with the dual band filter, I see a lot more nebulosity with the new camera with one exposure here. The only thing I have found is here in the corners, I have one corner here that 
the stars look not round. They're this one's a little bad too, but this corner the worst. I think I may have a tilt issue. Probably should have bought the O tilter with my camera, but maybe that'll be a future purchase when I get better. But so far so good. Looking at the full picture, it looks really nice. So we'll probably look at my final picture at the end of the video. Stick around for that. So far I'm really pleased with the purchase. Guess I'm moving up in the world. This is the second night I've been shooting. Uh, last night was my guide graph said I have an average over the whole night of seven hours of 0.79 arc seconds so not bad so in conclusion cool cameras two thumbs up so in the short amount of time I got to use it even with smoke the picture was a lot easier to process um, not so much noise it was easy to get rid of all that. I think I got a lot more nebulosity in a shorter amount of time than I did with my DSLR. I doubled my megapixels, got a little bit smaller pixel. So, so far so good. Can't wait till the skies clear up really good, smoke goes away, and I'm able to spend a little bit of time on the target with no moon. We can always hope, I guess. And I guess once the smoke goes away, I can start messing with PHD2 a little bit. Maybe get a little bit better guiding. Although my guiding right now is pretty good. It's under the resolution of what my telescope is. So there's that. But we always want better. So thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe. I bought something else. I'm just spending up a storm. So... If you want to see my next video and find out what it is, hit that notification bell. So I'll talk to you later, and as always, clouds suck.